This is your boy Super Mario, and you're tuned in to the On the Beat podcast. Let's go. Yeah, you on the beat, talking on the beat, learning on the beat, watch it on the beat. Get your skills up, won't you listen up? Yeah, you tuned in live. Yeah, you on the beat. Super Mario, and you're here on the On The Beat Podcast. I have a couple of guests with me. Uh, number one, I have a On The Beat Podcast alumnus, Mr. Jai Bino. How you doing? Doing great. Good to see you. Thank you for having the show. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And I also have Mr. Tony Wilson, a.k.a. Young James Brown. How you doing, sir? Doing great. How's everybody doing? Good. Good, man. Yep. We all are good. We here. We in 2021, and uh, we, 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 we here, right? <laughs> throughout, throughout all this adversity, we here, man. So I'm going to start with you, Mr. Tony. Uh, so how, how's everything been going, you know what I'm saying, during this whole po- uh, pandemic and all this adversity we've been, you know, facing in uh, 2020 and still going on here in 2021? Yeah, well, right now, uh, for me, everything is going on. I just got signed by Sony Records, you know, and I'm along with LL Cool J and uh, Eric B. And so I also have a, a major Broadway play that's coming out in the UK, uh, 2021, probably like December. Okay. And um, I brought the James Brown band, you know, I still have the original members and some of the other members that have backed James Brown's musical career. So that's what I'm looking forward to opening up. Uh, we got 32 different theaters in the UK that we open up on the a- AEG. So, okay gonna be good it's called the godfather of soul okay cool cool man and um and, and that's quite interesting that you you know saying you're carrying on the legacy of mr james brown and all of that you know saying of course he was before my time but i definitely you know saying grew up watching you know saying uh you know his time during the the late 80s and early 90s that's when i was growing up watching young, young james brown you know doing that dance and stuff like that. And I seen a couple of clips on your Instagram page, man. And hey, you got those moves down pat, man. I ain't gonna lie to you. <laughs> but you gotta be on the one doing James Brown. You can't have stuff with it, you know? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Um, so um, I'm, I'm, I'm going to start with you on the interview, Mr. Tony. Um, you know, I understand you're driving and everything like that. Um, so, like, what want, what what made you want to, you know, saying uh, bring the character James Brown uh, and, and that legacy uh, still burning and still alive here today? Um, what what made you lead to, you know, saying just to continue on that, uh, that legacy? Well, you know, as a young kid coming up, we always we're kind of like embarrassed by people calling us black. And when James Brown came out with saying that I'm black and I'm proud, it made us like peacocks. We pulled our chests out and we were we were proud to be called black and to do music. Well, fortunately for me, my godmother, Martha Reese from Martha and the Bandellas, mm-hmm. she took me everywhere and I did all kind of different shows. But as a um, as I grew up in the set, let's say the late 70s, I was approached by Don King to be a a, a lookalike understudy for Michael Jackson. Oh, so okay. I worked for Michael Jackson for three years and I was the number one Michael Jackson tribute artist in the 80s. Went on Oprah Winfrey and she crowned me as the best Michael Jackson in the 80s. Mm. You know? And so after I got off Oprah Winfrey show like in 87, 88, James Brown got out of jail in 91. So I did everything I could do Michael wise and that's before Michael became the you know the powerhouse Michael. Yeah. Um, yeah. I started doing James Brown because he got out of jail in ninety one when Butch Lewis threw on the pay per view. The Butch Lewis pay per view in nineteen ninety one, June tenth. And so I just started doing James Brown. I started hiring all of his band members that he fired every week. You know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He fired them. So we grew a relationship. And James Brown knew who I was, and he actually helped me a lot. I did two movies with him. Oh, okay. I, uh, I did Funk Blast, which is on YouTube. Funk Blast, and then I did uh, Beat the Devil with Gary Oldman, Clive Owens, Danny Drago, uh, hmm. okay, Marilyn Manson, Gary Oldman. And that's on YouTube, too. Beat the Devil, BMW, Beat the Devil, and then Funk Blast. And it's oh. also on my website on the youngjamesbrown.com. Yes, yes, definitely, definitely, man. Legacy alive, you know, because 
he crowned me and he renamed me Young James Brown. Because my handle used to be the God Son of Soul. Oh, okay. Uh, and and how was that? that um, and, and how was that relationship that you, you know what I'm saying, um, that you, you know, you developed with um, the late, great, ever, <laughs> James Brown, um, and when you guys connected, you know what I'm saying, um, how, how, how did he leave an effect on you? So how big what? How did he leave, how did he leave a, a effect on you, you know what I'm saying, um, with, you, with you guys' relationship? Well, you know, it's two, two different ways. If, if you don't work for him, and you're not a band member, you're gonna be treated a totally different way from uh, working with him in a capacity of, of uh, continuing his legacy. And, and so by saying that, you know, James Brown trusted that I would keep his musical legacy alive, his live concert legacy. And, and um, that's not a, a position that, that artists give too often to, to anyone. Right, right. You know? And I kept it, and I only have to kept it. I didn't keep it as an impersonator. I kept it as uh, the real thing, because I, I have this original band. Uh, even Boosie Collins was my uh, my bass player. All the original JBs. We did our 2008 tour, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, on my, my, um, my YouTube is the, uh, uh, excuse me, Young Jane Brown on YouTube. They can see everything, but he entrusted me uh, to keep the legacy and keep the guys dressed and keep the guys working and keeping them looking like one unit instead of everybody having all different color clothes and all that kind of stuff. Right. Because right. he believes once the uniform change and once the band start doing separate things, then it, it's going to fall apart. Man. Know? Man. So it, it, it's like the military. It's like the military saying, wear whatever you want to wear. You know? <laughs> Yeah. Do you feel like you got a lot of weight on your shoulders? Um, you know, saying carry on that legacy or or it's just, hey, you know, it's just another walk in the park type of situation. No, it, it, it's a it's a uh, it's a challenge because of of his death and the legacy and what he left and the, and the money that he left to uh, underprivileged children in Augusta and uh, South Carolina, and as well as just being a humanitarian and giving and doing turkey drives and toy drives and taking care of the homeless and the less fortunate because that's a lot of stuff he did behind the scenes that a lot of people you know, didn't know nothing about. He didn't have to do a, a we are the world or heal the world because he, he gave lots of money away. Yeah, you know? yeah. Exactly, so, man. He, yeah, so a lot of times he would tell promoters just just pay the band. And that, you know, so another was spending $350,000 they get up 150. Yeah, man. That's what that's what I'm talking about. That's 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 a real legend, you know what I'm saying? Doing their they're you know, doing what they're good at and doing what they're they they're loved for and stuff like that. Um now I know on your uh on your social media pages and stuff like that, you know, and you have the band that uh you know what I'm saying you're 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 helping God and you know what I'm saying you guys are doing all these shows, but you know with COVID and pandemic, especially um, in 2020 and also still affecting us here in 2021. How has that, you know what I'm saying, uh, helped or hurt or altered, you know what I'm saying, you guys' shows and uh, touring and stuff like that? Um, have you guys uh, felt any uh, backlash off of that? Yeah, well, when this COVID hit, I mean, I had just came from China and then the Fiji Islands. So when COVID hit, of course, it stopped everything physically. But as people really got into it, they were trying to find an outlet. So they started doing streaming. And then uh, we started doing shows online, you know, which is everybody doing thing. And so I guess one of the best known secrets is that as artists, they want to get their stuff out. They got to do it on streaming. And you yeah. got to make, you got to make, you got to remake cover songs. Yeah. Yeah. I'm telling you, make some cover songs. If you Come. want me to say remake, any of the, any of the songs that were hits, that's what people are going to tag to because it's an internet thing. Streaming is number one right now. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Uh, and we are, we are nothing without our DJs, people like you, our podcast. Those are the people that, that keep us working and give us some hope through uh, pandemics and through all kind of other measures, you know, is that people can be home and doing it. You know, they have a thing called uh, quarantine karaoke. Oh, really? They they got like about two million people, and it's just regular people that get in the, they get on a uh, karaoke machine, or they just sing the instrument music. 
a lot of them are getting famous off of that. They don't have to make crazy videos. Oh man, that's that's crazy. I I, I haven't even came across anything like that. Man, that's crazy. <laughs> are they doing that on uh, on TikTok or Instagram or Facebook? Our number our number one source right now are people like you, DJs, MCs. Those those are the ones. But a lot of people not utilizing the format because they don't get it. You know. Yeah. They don't, yeah. they understand about on Spotify and be on all these different platforms because somebody saw them on your show. Yeah. On a DJ show that somebody is DJing. And you know, and then you know, of course, YouTube blocks the music, so people thought of other formats they can go on, whether it's Clubhouse or whatever, whatever, whatever. Right. You know. But uh, you know, that live streaming is, is is the number one thing that's happening, period. Yeah, that's you know? it, man. And if you if you had any advice that you would give uh you know young entertainers out there, um and I know you just gave a little small nugget right there, but if you was to give any other advice to uh any up and coming entertainer out there, whether they're someone that's you know doing impersonations or you know saying even an independent uh music career, what would you give that 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 person? Yeah, but I would tell them to ignore anybody that's trying to tell you to give it up, to stop. Uh, don't do this. Don't do that. Try everything. You you use or use all your resources. Never ever give up. You know and 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 keep on writing. You know make some music. And if you're not somebody who's creative and a writer, make somebody else's music. Exactly. Do the re- different rendition of it. Luther Vandross is the king of remakes. I, I can't nobody even find Luther Vandross songs that he wrote. Exactly. <laughs> And old Luther, <laughs> old Luther was a bad boy, man. Look, let me tell you something. <laughs> but you, did you, but you see how the way he, he made those songs his own. Mm-hmm. He made he'll do a, a fast song, he'll do it slow. He'll take a slow song and make it fast. Mm-hmm. Yes. All it is is tweaking. You know, I work with the Isley Brothers. Too. I'm on tour with the Isley Brothers. Same thing. You know, when they you got to look at some of their songs. They made some of their songs slow. And then they did it fast, you know? Yeah. Man. Well, cool, man. I, I know you're driving and, um, you know what I'm saying, I don't want to be a distraction and everything like that. Um, Before we get up out of here, man, Um, how did you and uh, Mr. You see that? Look. Uh, hey, hey. hey. <laughs> I like that, man. Yeah, man. So, so how yeah, did you guys, uh, you you and Mr. Uh, Bino, you know what I'm saying, meet and, you know what I'm saying, know each other and stuff like that? Give us a little small backstory on that. Was, Either I, one of y'all. Every year, I get the James Brown Save Boston because James Brown Save Boston in 1968. And when I did the show, then I met Jamie came and uh, when I was at BN and they were interviewing me for doing a James Brown Save Boston and also for doing a Michael Jackson's anniversary. So we did it at the Regent Theater and we sold out. So every year I'm going to be in April 4th, I'm going to be around Boston or something. During the pandemic, we're supposed to do it at, at uh, Roxbury Community College. But of course, for the last two years, we weren't able to do it because of the COVID. But for the, I have done it in 2017, 2017, and 2018. We did uh, James Brown Save Boston at the Regent Theater in Arlington. Okay. okay. That's pretty awesome. Uh, I said that's awesome. Yeah, yeah. And we're gonna always keep doing it, you know, because that's yes, you know, James Brown say Boston. Yeah, yeah, it is, yeah, it is, man. Well, cool, man. I appreciate you coming on, man. Um, you know, saying you can hang around if you want to. Um, yeah. but uh, I'm, I'm gonna switch over here, and we're gonna talk about uh, Mr. Jay Bino's new record. You know, what I'm saying I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna spill the beans on it. I'm gonna let him introduce his new record and everything like that. Oh, before we get up out of here, uh, Mr. Tony Wilson, uh, let the people know where they can find you at on social media and uh, uh, any other information you want to give out to the public. Okay, I'm Tony Wilson on Facebook. I got two pages, and I'm also uh, Young James Brown on everything on Instagram, Twitter, all of it. My okay. website, JamesBrown.com. Okay, cool. And I'll make sure I put that information right below this video right here. Um, that way people can connect with you and stuff like that. YouTube, if they, they can just type in Young James Brown on YouTube. All right, cool deal. Young James Brown, folks. Y'all, y'all, 
Y'all make sure y'all go ahead and search him. Um, I found him real easy on Instagram. Just young, all together, young James Brown at young James Brown on Instagram. But we'll have all this information um, here below and stuff like that. This is Jaye Mano. All right. All right, all right man. All right, man. This is Jaye Mano. Let's talk about this record that you got, man. I heard it. You know what I'm saying? I love it. It has a West Coast vibe to it. You know what I'm saying? Talk to us about it, man. Let us know what, what what you got out and what you got coming, man. Well, this song is called Best Man's Couch, and it's about, uh, I guess, about a person in a relationship, you know. Uh, they have a little disagreement, and he's saying, the man said he wants to work it out, and and so he doesn't want to break up with the woman. So she says, um, so what can we do to um, work it out? And she walks out. So now, I get, so, so basically, you know, He's saying, okay, so sun you off, you know, you sleep on your best friend's couch because you don't want to talk to me. So, so that's what I came from about. And it, it's about, it, it's, it's like, it's like a, a song saying, you know, it, it saying no matter what's going on, we can, we can work it out. You know, I don't want to see you sleep on a best friend's couch because I want you, I want to be together. So we don't want to have a fight. We want to work together. But since you don't want to work together, you now you sleep on your best friend's couch. And so that's where that came from, from about. I'm sure people can relate to, you know, because, and I basically Donna Poole and I came up with a song, you know, to try and reach people and say that say that no matter what you're going through, if you're going through a fight, you don't want to sleep on a person's couch. You want to Absolutely. Talk. Absolutely not, man. I, but I could tell you, I'm gonna sit up on a lot of people's best friends' couches, man. I've been <laughs> I've been through it and whatnot, man. <laughs> you know. I think was it, <laughs> so was it difficult kind of, you know, uh writing this this particular record, you know what I'm saying, uh, as far as the lyrics and everything, or was it a personal experience that you you kind of dealt with, or is, you know what I'm saying, or this is just something that, you know, popped in and just good songwriting skills and stuff like that? Well, that's kind of personal, because I've been in a situation where I had a girlfriend and she didn't want to work in a certain example. So I can, so to, so to me, that was kind of personal, you know, but it was also kind of hard I wasn't. It wasn't so sort of hard to write, you know. I just had to come up, come up with a course and tell Donna about it. And he sort of, and he sort of, I did, I did, did, did it together. But it was kind of close to me because I brought the image of my old girlfriend. So, you know, I was like, but it didn't mean that memory, you know. And I'm sure people can write, you know. Okay, okay, cool, man. And, uh, you know, uh, listening to the record, man, I, I, like I said, I, I like everything about it and stuff like that. Uh, where, where, where you went and record that at, man? Because, um, when I listen to it, it has a very good West Coast vibe to it. Kind of like how Mr. Tony Wilson has that drop top vibe to it. And you riding down the freeway and everything like that. And, you know what I'm saying? It, it just has that feel good so, uh, sound to it. So uh, can you kind of talk talk to us about, you know, where you recorded that process and everything like that? Absolutely. That was actually recorded in Lolo. And I actually, I actually did my part on the hey. phone. So but I was recorded in Lolo. I did my part on the phone. You know, but um, but Donald Poo did Poo in Lowell. He has a studio in Lowell, so, and um, he he has the beast Pro tools, and he did that, you know. And I just did my part on the cell phone, so I'll make it easy, you know. But yeah, but but recording music is it's much easier because you can do it on a cell phone or laptop anyway, you know. Just transfer it to the person; they can mix and master, you know. So I didn't think that's that's good to, to have good to have as technology because. Because music you know, has changed so much, you know, and if you get if you don't give up, you know, you can miss out. So having be able to record on your on your cell phone or a laptop or a podcast or anyway, you know, is great. Because you can just think of a microphone just do it anyway, and it's much easier, you know. So I can record on a state now or on a plane, you know, or a train, you know. It's, yeah, yeah. Technology is perfect, you know. So I try and use it. I, I use it to my advantage, but I also try and use it responsibly. You know, I make sure I that whatever I say it, I'm careful because I want to be a good artist or not promote, you know, promote negative. You want to promote positive. You know, such a sense of what you want to try and pull something positive. Since you want to quote right now, so make sure it's positive, you know. So, mm -hmm. yeah. So, yeah. so, so let me get this straight. You recorded that on the phone or iPad or mobile device? The vocal? I did, I did, I recorded, I recorded my track, my, my course on, 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 on my cell phone, which is much easier. You can oh, okay. It, I have like a microphone myself where I can just sort of talk into, you know, and send the part of the door and he can take it, download it, you know, and put it on a computer. So, so yeah. that's what one can do on a laptop. So it's much easier to do on a computer or a cell phone because music is changing right now and to be able to do music anywhere, you know, in your house is much easier. A blessing, you save money, you know, it's, it's free, you know, it's much easier, you know. So I think that having that technology is great, you know, because if I can save money, you know, the music gets perfect, you know. 
Yeah, so. man. It, it, the vocals sound real good, man. Hey, shh. man, yeah, that's yeah. awesome. You know what I'm saying? We it, we come a long way with, when it comes to music recording and stuff like that, right? Because <laughs> the world's changing now. You know, Clone Ride, that's the changing. So I think, so I, so I think trying to step, you know, but as long as you're doing music good and you're staying with the times, you know, you, you can't go on. That's what I want my friends to know. As long as you're music, you know, stay true to yourself. Don't let anybody talk, you know, talk you down. You'll be fine. You make it. Yeah, yeah, man. Um, and 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 you said the producer was uh, Mr. Donald Poole, right? Yes, I, I guess he, he also has a website called Grand Pop King. So on TikTok, he has he has one hundred thousand he has one hundred he has one hundred thousand thousand for followers, one hundred thousand. Yeah, that's what, and that's what we need now to go or to get back there to get back there because they want to see him that kind of tall to want to sign his song. So Donald Poole, Grand Pop King, TikTok want to try and make a video for a song. Try and put it on there so we get some good views and trying to send to the record because they want to see that, you know. So, yeah, but I mean, because he, because he is the man, you know. So Donald Poole is the man. Yeah, you know? man. He, boy, I saw, I saw him on TikTok, man, and he, he, he got the moves, man. He real smooth with it and whatnot, and uh, you know, what I'm saying because I had to, I when you sent me his information over, I had kind of took a look at him on TikTok. And I was like, is this the producer? I was like, and I, I saw him on face, um, excuse me, not Facebook, uh, Instagram. So I'm on Instagram, put two two together on for us to face and stuff like that. I like, man, this this guy, you moving and grooving. I don't know. It, it, between him and Mr. Tony Wilson, I don't know, man. They they, they can have a nice <laughs> dance off and stuff like that. Yeah. They yeah. definitely got you. And Mr. Tony Wilson, you got some moves too now, man. I I, I want to ask Mr. Tony Wilson. So, like, how do you keep those moves fresh and you know what I'm saying? And, and move because you know I, I'm, I'm still young at heart but I, I I'm not loose like that man so you know what are some of the things that you keep loose and you know what I'm saying you can continue doing your show performances and stuff like that or you, you know do you work out do any type of yoga or anything like anything like that mental mental you know what I'm saying mental uh, what they call that uh, stress free um, meditation and stuff like that or whatnot what I do is I pretend like there's three pit bulls after me and I can't see the third. <laughs> and you move, move, moving them out the way. <laughs> and you put that fear because you, you know, physically, you already know what you can do dance wise. If you can't do a split, don't do it. But you can move your body and you just got to find that beat. You know, even for non dancers, there's always one song that they can jam off of. Yes, sir. And, and I don't know why that is, but it's always one song that they're gonna that they're gonna jam off of. So um, I already know what I can do, so I just incorporate that depending on what the song is, what the beat is, and and what the uh, the hook is. Right, right. Like, hammer. But he say break away, dun, 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 and everybody know they get ready to do this. It's like Michael Jackson when he bust out on the moonwalk on Billie Jean. Somebody's gonna do something different. For me, I walk on my head instead of moonwalk on my feet. Hmm. Okay. Okay. Cool. Cool, man. Well, I'm, I'm definitely going to be watching y'all videos, man, and trying to, you know what I'm saying, pick up my steps, man. You know what I'm saying? I got, uh, I'll be getting married here pretty soon, so I'm going to have to work on my dance moves on that dance floor. <laughs> <laughs> I just do it, man, but I, that, uh, Grandpa Poppy King, he, he he's on it. Oh, yeah, yeah. He he, he definitely on it, man. <laughs> so, man, Mr. He- so, so, Mr. Bino, uh, so, um, you know, we, we talked about, you know, uh, your record best friend's couch or whatnot. Um, so, is it out on uh, all digital streaming platforms right now? Um, well, it's not out right now. I mean, okay, we're, okay. We've actually been emailed to some people, you know, get to video, you know, but that's, but it will be out now because you're going to play on this, on this show so people can hear, you know, so, and, and we're going to try and make make it, uh, make a video, make it popping, get it banging, because you know, I guess Don know what he has one hundred thousand views, so we're going to try and make it slam and so can get signed, you know, because that's what people want to see, you know. So they yeah. see. So I think I think I think the more views you have, the better chance you have of getting signed, you know. So that's, that's what it's about, you know. So you know, okay. good, good videos, you, you can't you can't go wrong, you know. You can't go wrong. And having and having Tony and Don, you know, the you know, was a blessing because they used to, those are some bad cats, you know, Tony Wilson. Young, young James Brown, Donald Poole, you can't go on with them. Those cats don't play. Those cats are the best in the business. So you got to hook up them because they can trust, they can tear it up. You know, you should start on Boston. You know, they were like, wow, these cats are, are some, these cats are, you know, whew, these cats are amazing. You know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, man. No, I, I, I definitely can see that. You know what I'm saying? It just, it, again, it has that uh, that viral sensation to the, to the record, you know. 
um, when, when you first turn it on and you start listening to it, definitely has that viral sensation. Now, one more question for you, Mr. Bino. Um, I, I heard like it was um, kind of like on the second verse or something like that. It was uh, someone rapping on that particular record. Uh, can you kind of, you know, spill the beans on who that was? Yes, I, I think that was Gerard, either Gerard or, Gerard or Emerson. So I have some pieces that that rap. So I think it was either Gerard or Emerson. I'm not trying to find out, you know. But yeah, but but those, but those, like I said, those also some bad catch in the business, you know. Emerson, he's also on Instagram. Check him out, you know, Gerard on Gerard's on Instagram, Facebook. Check him out, YouTube, you know, because he like said you can't come on these guys. These, these guys don't play. These guys are serious, you know. So and like I said, these guys take it seriously. I take it seriously. You know, I think we're gonna make this year our best year ever. I can't wait to see what happens, you know. Okay, cool. And you guys have an anticipation date on when you guys uh be releasing that record? I think we're gonna try and release it as soon as possible. Just gonna, we're, okay. we're gonna try and try and make a video and get it out there. But you can play it right now, you know. So people can hear, you know, and cause and sitting here right now and say, Wow, who's guys, you know? So I'm wanting that's why this is anyway, so we can get you know, get some get, get some more views, you know, because the more views you have, the better chance you have, you know. That's what it's about, you know. So yeah. I say I say, Oh, gosh, you know, do your music, you know, get views, get, get you know, gonna go far, you know. This is not a game, you know. I take it seriously, you know. I take it seriously, you know. Yeah. Yeah. And so, um, when was the, uh, I guess, the, 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 the last time you put out a record, um, you know, before this one right here? Um, I think last time I put out a record was, was, was last year, maybe in, um, I think it was maybe August or September. Um, oh, okay, okay. I so I, I I'll have to check check back and see when when the last lucky was, but they can also go on people can go on to my my, my soundcloud page, so soundcloud.com slash J A Bino J A I Y E soundcloud.com slash J A Bino. And I also I also have interviews on on YouTube, uh slash J A Bino. I've interviewed I I have I have my own podcast show. I've interviewed people like like Maya or Shanti. I'm trying to get some people on the show. Mm-hmm. And if, I know Cassie, Tasha Scott, um, uh, a girl from, from Destiny Child, is, is Tom Robinson, Nevia. Um, yeah, yeah. I think there's some good, some some amazing people. So I'm hoping some people come on my show. You know, it's on it's on the WBC about one two point nine FM, Boston Local Community Radio Station, the J Man Show. I can if you any time, you know, check me out. You know, I'm on YouTube. Call back. You know, let's make it happen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Make sure y'all go check out the J-Man show, man, on uh, on all those platforms. We're going to make sure we put that information in the description as well, man. Um, and like I said, we're going to be on the lookout for that. Uh, Mr. Tony Wilson, um, what you got going on, man, for us, um, you know, coming in the near future? Um, any future releases or um, any any um, uh, new shows that's coming up where people can come out and, uh, and check out you and your band? I'll be on tour with the Isley Brothers. Once we break out, they're gonna do their 60th anniversary. And then again, I have a, I actually have a song that I, that I wrote to rhythm. It's called "Fight the Power." It's on YouTube as well. Tony Wilson, "Fight the Power," okay. and I, it's that. And then, uh, of course, uh, the Godfather Soul will be on Broadway in the UK, and then we'll be doing uh, two uh, American tours. Okay, two so, two American tours. Up so when they start hearing that Janet Jackson's Diamond Tour is open and all this stuff, bam, that's when we know we're getting ready to roll. Oh, yeah, <laughs> oh, yeah, oh, yeah. Um, are you guys uh on that American tour? Are you guys uh planning to come like uh come th- uh, through the south? I'm down here in South Texas, man, so you know, what I'm saying I'd like to come what and check you out, man. Oh, I'm in Houston, Houston. Oh, man, of course, I'd be down all up in Houston. Actually, I'm supposed to be going to Houston in a couple of weeks. Oh, okay. So I- yeah, because I, I did a lot of stuff for the army, the military down there. Okay, okay. Okay, yeah, cool. I, Antonio. Oh, okay, San Antonio? Okay, yeah, a lot of Air Force bases out there. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely, absolutely, man. Oh, well, cool. Thanks, is big time. And then, of course, like we, like I said, once we do our um, residency in the UK, we'll come definitely be doing Texas and all the other uh, states. Okay, cool, cool. And um, you be, guys... Oh, I'm sorry, right, go ahead, go ahead. I said, there'll be some other shows that I'll invite you to and reach out to you. Any show I do in, in uh, Houston or Texas. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. When you can swing through, man, um, you know what I'm saying? Um, I, I, we're gonna, I'm going to exchange information. I'm going to get your information. I'm going to send you my information. Anytime you swing through uh, South it. Texas area or even Louisiana, hey, man, let me know or whatnot. I was going to ask you, um, do you guys do any type of casino performances or whatnot? Yeah, well, our band is a national band. Um, we do the casinos. I do all of the big casinos. Um, like I said, whether it's with my James Brown band or with uh, whether I'm with the Isley Brothers. So 
the major casinos that, that hire the national acts we're in and we'll be a part of. The only thing that's going to be separate is because I'll be on this residency and it might be for 32 weeks in on Broadway in the UK. Oh. But when they start all the big festivals, we'll be on them. Awesome, man. That's awesome, man. And, um, you know what I'm saying? Uh, like I said, man, I... I appreciate you, you know what I'm saying, coming on to the On The Beat podcast and, uh, you know what I'm saying, just letting the people know, you know what I'm saying, who you guys are. And I just thank you for continuing to bring out that James Brown legacy and just continuing to bring light to that, man. And, uh, you know what I'm saying, it's just always cool because when I first saw you, I was like, yep, that's 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 James Brown right there. Uh, I think he was in an interview with two gentlemen and um, you had like a blue suit on, uh, kind of like a blue blackish um, type of suit on. And uh, right. they was asking you to dance and stuff like that. And I mean, you had the moves down. I was like, yeah, yeah, <laughs> he does a good job. <laughs> He's on it. We all be messing around. Yes, so sir. The fast festival, all the festivals, and then even all the local ones. They, it's so it's so much. Everybody's going to be working. That's what's going to be so great. Once it open up, they're going to be hiring all kind of local acts. Awesome. Believe because they, they can't afford the big acts now because everybody's trying to catch up. And because of the pandemic, the, the national acts and the promoters now, they got to pay the insurance, the health insurance, and they don't want to do that. So they're trying to do all in. There's going to be so many all in deals. Watch what happens. Man, it's, it's going to be busy, man, uh, especially when they open it back up. And it may be pretty soon, man. Uh, we just never know, but it, it may be pretty soon. I'm going to call it at the end of the year. What about yourself? When you, when you think you're going to be back busy, busy, busy? Well, I, I can say before at the end, this December, this Christmas coming up here, bam, it'll be ready. Because, I mean, they might open up in September, but people going to still be weary. Because like right now, if you look at Miami, they went and did an 8 o'clock curfew. And they and the police putting pepper spray because all these spring, these kids don't want to stay in. They're ready to get out. Yeah, yeah. There were thousands, hundreds of thousands of them on South Beach. Yeah. You, yeah, so these people even more so when we get closer to, we don't want to miss our summer, July, June, July, August. But by September, we're going to know everything. Yeah, yeah, we definitely will, man. Um, like I said, Mr. Tony Wilson, a.k.a. Young James Brown, I appreciate you for coming on to the On The Beat podcast. Again, uh, spit out your social media handle um, for the folks so they can uh, go ahead and follow you. Tony Wilson on Facebook, two pages. Young James Brown on YouTube. Young James Brown on Instagram. I got two of them. And you can find me. Just type in Tony Wilson and James Brown. Google it. You'll find everything. All right. And Mr. Jaye Bino, go ahead and spit out your uh, social media information as well. That way people can find you once more. One more time. Got it. Okay. My name is Jaye Jai Bino. You can follow me on Facebook slash Jaye Bino. J A I Y E. I'm on Instagram, same as same as my name, J A I Y E. On YouTube slash J A I Y E. I got some videos there. Oh, I also interviewed Matthew. I also interviewed Matthew Knowles, Beyonce's father. He was a great guy, so check that out. You know. Um, let's see. Um, I'm also on TikTok. I, I think I'm on TikTok, so J A I Y E. Um, uh, a Twitter, yeah. So check me out. You know, you can. Uh, my email. My email is okay. J A I Y E B Y N O E at yahoo.com you can reach out to me there send me an email we can change numbers you know and love to have, love to have it on my show um, check out everything I'll, I'll my music which is soundcloud.com slash jaya bino uh, same as youtube show out the interview with Matthew knows um, I hope much interviews check them out you know, you'll, you'll, you'll love them all right, cool deal, man. Folks, uh, Mr. Jai Bino, he'll have a new record dropping here pretty soon uh, called yeah. Best Friends Couch. So make sure you go ahead and follow him on all his social media handles and uh, stay tuned for that record to be dropping. Also, Mr. Uh, Mr. Tony Wilson, a.k.a. Young James Brown, he'll be touring um, here pretty soon. Just so you guys make sure you go ahead and follow him as well so you can stay on top of when he'll be doing uh, the American tour and stuff like that. And also, I'm sorry, Mr. Tony Wilson, booking information. If anyone want to book you guys, uh, you know, how, how how would they go about want to try to book you guys? Uh, any information out there? They can email me at Young James Brown at AOL or Young James Brown at Gmail. Mr. Tony Wilson, do you have any music on uh, on digital streaming platforms as well? No, I have mine on YouTube, and I will okay. be having like I just got signed by Sony, okay. so we're gonna be stuff out, and we'll have it locked in. It'll be a big surprise what we coming out with. <laughs>
But for right now, go on YouTube, Fight the Power. It's on there. All righty, cool deal. I'll be on the lookout for your music, Mr. Tony Wilson. And, uh, right. and I'll be adding that to my Spotify playlist for the podcast and everything like that. Folks, we're running out of time and stuff like that. But I appreciate you guys tuning in to the On The Beat podcast. And you were checking out Mr. Tony Wilson, a.k.a. Young James Brown, and also Mr. Jaye Bino and the producer. You know what I'm saying? I'll put his information in there, Mr. Donald Pools. That way you can follow him on TikTok at Grand Hop King. One word and stuff like that. All right, folks, you've been tuned into the On The Beat podcast. And we'll talk to you guys later. Peace. Peace. Bye to the